everyone. So today we're going to be taking a look at Deutsch's algorithm, which is essentially the most primitive quantum computing algorithm. This video will detail how the algorithm actually functions, as well as outline a code that I wrote in Penny Lane's framework that simulates Deutsch's algorithm. Now it's important to preface that although it has essentially no use in today's realm of QC, Deutsch's algorithm serves as an excellent proof of concept that in certain instances, quantum computers can exponentially outperform classical ones. All right, so let's get started with Deutsch's problem. He essentially sought to determine if a function is constant, that is f of zero equals f of one, or if it is balanced where f of zero does not equal f of one. So this is what the quantum circuit actually looks like, and we will begin by observing this initial state of the qubits. So visualizing in the vector state, our qubits are in the input state as follows. One is initialized in the state zero, and the other in the state one. From this, we will apply a Hadamard transformation to each qubit. This quantum operator is a one qubit rotation, mapping the above basis vectors to two superposition states where there is equal probability of measuring either zero or one. Its normalized unitary matrix is defined as this. Again, the root two is important for the normalization constraint. So now moving on to the next step in the algorithm as shown here. So once our qubits have passed through the Hadamard gate, they are in this form. From there, we can expand the qubits by some very simple multiplication. This makes it a lot easier for the next and most profound step of the algorithm. So again, by simply multiplying these two brackets together, we are left with this qubit form. Now let's observe the unitary matrix shown here as u sub f. So this unitary operator maps our vector x, y to x, y addition modulus 2 f of x. Now for those unfamiliar, mod 2 essentially means that you add y and f of x, divide by 2, and then print the remainder. So now, as the qubits pass through the unitary matrix, they are acted on as follows. So let's take a look at this oracle on a case-by-case -case basis. And more specifically, for the purpose of this video, I'll be looking at when f of 0 equals 0 and when f of 1 also equals 0. As you can see, this is an example of a constant function. All right, so once our qubits have passed through our unitary matrix, they are left in this state. And then once we can re-expand these qubits to this state, which appears incredibly similar to the superposition states we observed previously. So as the final step in Deutsch's algorithm, we will then pass our first qubit through a Hadamard once again. Now, this collapses the first qubit of the case we observed to be the vector zero. So our qubit will now appear as follows. Again, the secondary qubit does remain unchanged. For all other cases, this is what we end up with, where this top possibility is when f of 0 does equal f of 1, so for the constant functions, and this bottom possibility when f of 0 does not equal f of 1, again, for the balanced ones. So we can conclude that where f of 0 does equal f of 1, the algorithm doesn't change the state of the first qubit. Whereas when f of 0 does not equal f of 1, 
the first qubit is flipped to be the value of 1. So contrary to classical means of solving Deutsch's problem, we can determine a primary character of two functions by only performing one evaluation. All right, so that concludes the outline of the algorithm itself. Now we will take a look at the code in Penny Lane's framework. So the program begins by creating our quantum device, essentially a simulated quantum computer to which we can run our algorithm on a classical computer. Now we are using the default qubit setting. The wires and shots in the code seen here defines the number of qubits and times that a measurement will occur respectively. So next we must define the function that we are concerned with. For the purpose of this video, I defined the function that we used above. So where f of zero equals zero and f of one also equals zero. Now we must prepare the oracle, which is the array shown in the code here. This is mathematically how the qubits are acted upon when passing them through the unitary matrix. As seen here, we actually define the unitary matrix by calling the function with the oracle we just created. Now we create our Q node, which is essentially a quantum function and a device on which it executes in Penny Lane's framework. So we must now initialize the qubits in the state 0, 1 by applying a Pauli X gate on the second one. Next comes the first Hadamards. Then we apply the Oracle and finally apply the second Hadamard on the first qubit, measure that qubit and call the circuit. So based upon the algorithm's function, the value of 0 was returned since that is the state of the first qubit. Now, if we were to use a balanced function in this code, it would have returned one. So that was a basic run through of Deutsch's algorithm. Hopefully you learned something new, but if you are still curious, feel free to check out my LinkedIn, Medium, and personal website linked in the description below.